Okay, so let's look at this 3D uh, combined loading problem. We've got a sign that's subjected to a uniform uh, wind loading this uh, kind of this pressure of 1.5 kPa uniformly distributed uh, on that rectangular sign. I determine the stress at point C and point D on the 100 millimeter diameter supporting post. All right, um, I think I'm only going to look at uh, point D. Uh, but think about um, think about you know what this would look like on C, how it would be different. Okay, so the first thing is we need to cut this um, right. We need to cut this right here and solve for f x f y these internal forces at the cut and these internal moments m x. Uh, I like to do double arrow. This would be M, Z, double arrow, M, Y. So there's six unknowns. F, X, F, Y, F, Z, M, X, M, Y, M, Z. Um, and we have six equations. Some of the forces in X equal zero. Some of the forces in Y. All the sum of the forces equals zero. All the sum of the moments equals zero. All right. So uh, we need to sum the forces. This is a uh, pressure right here, 1.5 kPa. I want to replace that with one force right there. What would the magnitude of that be? force B. Uh, well, 1.5 kPa acting uniformly over an area of 2 um, <clears throat> by 1 meters. And also the units uh, will kind of help us. Um, okay, a Pascal is a Newton, Newton per meter squared. Uh, so that's almost what we have here. Uh, but a pressure is force over area, so a force would be pressure times area. So the equivalent force would be this 1500 PA times the area of 2 meters, 1 meter. That would leave me with units of newtons. Alright, so this would be 3,000 Newton. So we can replace this one force, <clears throat> this um, pressure, with a force of 3,000 newtons right there. Okay, so now, when I'm ready to sum the forces in X, sum the forces in Y, sum the forces in Z, uh, I might have an FX, I might have an FY, I might have an FZ, uh, but the only thing that's really counteracting is this 3,000 in the negative x, uh, so fz is 0, fy is 0, and fx would be 3,000 newtons right here. So those are the internal forces. How about the internal moments? How about the internal moments? I could sum my moments in x, sum my moments in y, sum my moments in z. I might have an internal mx, an internal my, an internal mz. Uh, what kind of moment would this 3,000 Newton force create? It might create two. Uh, if it is offset from the cut in two directions, then I think it is offset in the cut uh, in two directions. Sorry here, let's see here. Uh, it is offset, uh, it is three meters above the cut. All right, it is three meters above the cut. Uh, it is also acting at the middle. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not three meters, not just three meters. It's three meters, sorry, to the bottom of this sign. Uh, so it would be <clears throat> 3.5 meters to the middle right there. Uh, and it would be in the middle one meter offset this way. So it ha kind of has two moment arms. It can create two Two moments. Which one uh, do you see first? So I think the one that I see first is that it would cause rotation about this Z axis. Right? It, it, it's offset by one. It's over here. It would cause this twisting, this rotation in the Z axis. This 3,000 Newton force uh, with a moment arm of one would create a Z rotation. Let me make sure this makes sense. This is in the X direction. Its moment arm is in the Y. Yeah, that'd be a Z moment. Positive or negative? Well, would when I curl my fingers in the rotation that it's causing, would that be positive? Is my thumb pointing in positive Z uh, using my right hand? Uh, yes, uh, this would be a positive 
moment right here. Okay? But then because it is 3.5 above the cut, it's pushing over, it's pushing over here, it's pushing, twisting about the y-axis as well. Uh, 3,000 newtons with a moment arm, 3.5 meters. Let me make sure that makes sense. This is in the x direction, it's moment arm is in the z. Yeah, x force with a z moment arm would be a y moment. Positive or negative? When I curl my right hand, my four fingers in my right hand, in that uh, direction of the rotation, my thumb is pointing in the negative y. My thumb is pointing in the negative y. All right, and so we'll set these equal to zero and see what we get. We've got mx is zero, my positive 10,500 or 10.5 kilonewton meters, mz in negative three kilonewton meters. And so there are my moments. Okay, now each of these forces and moments can create a stress. I like to think of the axial one first, the one that is perpendicular in the z direction. Uh, this could cause a normal stress of N over A. Obviously, it's zero right there. Um, and this could cause a tau of TR over J. All right, and then the others, the others, these are shears. This could cause a shear stress VQ over IT. This could cause a tau VQ over IT. These are bending moments. These are bending moments. Sigma my over i sigma my over i a lot of these might be zero a lot of these might be zero but um some of them aren't and we will uh, calculate each of them okay so let's start with this fx this 3000 right here i've got an fx of 3000 newtons it could cause a vq over it a shear stress uh, but maybe it's zero, maybe it's not. It depends on the point that we're looking at. Let's look at point D. Let's look at point D right here. So here's my cut. I have a positive 3,000 internal force. I have a force right here of 3,000 newtons. All right. My neutral axis for a V, my neutral axis would be right here. And the shear stress on the neutral axis is the maximum. Uh, so yeah, point D here does have a VQ over IT. Whereas if we were looking at point C, it would be zero. Point A, it would be zero. But point D does have a VQ over IT. So the V would be the force, 3,000 newtons. <clears throat> the Q, the Q is Y prime a prime, let me uh, come back to Y prime, but the A prime is the distance away from my point D. Uh, so this would be half of pi R squared. Uh, <clears throat> the R, um, yeah, 100 millimeter diameter. The R would be 50 millimeters squared. The Y prime <clears throat> would be the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of that A prime. Um, look at your formula sheet. The centroid of a half circle is pi by, uh, is, is 4R over 3 pi. The Y bar prime for a half circle would be 4R over 3 pi. Okay? So, and, and this is the area, just the an area of a half of a circle, 1 half pi r squared right there all right the i <clears throat> it's just the i for the shape <clears throat> the i for the circle i for the circle is one fourth pi r to the fourth and the thickness uh, would be this thickness across right here which would be the diameter 100 millimeters all right so that would be 0.509 MPA is the tau. 
In what direction? In the, well, the direction that, that that V was in, the direction, the positive X direction. Positive X direction. Okay? All right. Now, if Y is zero, we don't have to worry about it. If Z is zero, don't have to worry about that. M X is zero, don't have to worry about that. All right, so let's go to M Y. Let's go to MY. MY of 10.5 kilonewton meters. It is a bending moment. It could cause an MY over I, depending on the point. MY is bending about the Y axis. And so the neutral axis is the Y axis. So, so here is my neutral axis. Here's the Y, my neutral axis. Uh, and it's bending about that axis. It's a positive Y moment. And so I would curl my fingers in the positive Y. And there would be compression on this side. There would be tension on this side. But on the neutral axis, point D, it's going to be zero. Zero at point D. If we were looking at point C... It would be compression, and we could do the MY divided by the I. But for point D, it's zero. <clears throat> All right, then MZ. An MZ of negative three kilonewton meters. It could cause a TR over J shear stress. <clears throat> All right, so if a twist, if it twists, in the negative Z direction, my thumb is not pointing positive Z, my thumb is pointing negative Z. That would kind of look like this type of stress. And so at D, yeah, definitely it has some stress, and it is in this X positive X direction, TR over J. So this would be a T of three, let's do 3,000 Newton meters. Might have to change that. Uh, the R just the distance that your point is away from the center of rotation, 50 millimeters, the J pi by two radius to the fourth. The units don't work out, I need to get rid of that meters, change it to millimeters, so multiply this times a thousand, right there. And yes, I've got a stress of 15.3 MPA is my tau in the positive x direction. Okay, now, I need to look at all those stresses and combine <coughs> similar stresses in similar directions. The stresses that I've calculated, uh, well, th those are the only ones. Now, what, what, is the, what is the normal stress at point D? Zero. There, there was nothing. There was nothing because there was not a lot of forces. There was no FZ. Uh, and there, there was no bending moments uh, at point D that created any stress at point D. Uh, but there's some tau. There's two taus, uh, and both of them are in the positive x direction. So we can add both of them up. And so I'm going to call it in the, or I'm going to say tau at point D is 15.8 MPA in the positive x direction in the positive x direction all right got that so look at the process solve for the forces solve for the moments solve for each of the stresses that each of those could cause and combine similar stresses <coughs> in similar directions all right